Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? I'm Enrique. And this is Easy Things to Draw. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm having an awesome day. Uh, really, really good day. I'm, I'm just reminded about how many cool uh, creative friends I have. And um, so the subject of today's video is uh, how to find your own style. And let me kind of say something before this. I, I recommend that this is something that you do after you master the, or not master, at least adequately have your basics down. This is an advanced thing. If you don't feel this is going to help you in any way, then I, you know, don't don't listen to it. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't pay attention to what I'm about to say, like in terms of advice. Um, this is for people who got a, a decent amount of their basics already down. And uh, what I talk about, uh, like I'm talking about style, right? Different styles. What do I mean by style? I mean something that's kind of a uh, uniquely you. And the illusion, and this is my opinion, the illusion is that there's a new style to discover and I honestly feel there isn't. I feel like every single style has been done already. Uh, that's just my opinion. I'm sure some will prove me wrong. But I just feel like when there's a, a style of art uh, that comes out that's supposedly new, I just feel like it's just a remixed version. It's like car outside. I just feel like it's a remixed version of something that's come before and that, that hasn't been around for a little bit. You know, hasn't been applied to that for a while. Um, that's just my opinion, but you know, like I said, at the same time, that's on the macro level, right? That's throughout history. But I mean, on a micro level, yeah, you're gonna do you're gonna do a style of art that will be, you know, you. Uh, I remember back when we were at SeaWorld, we would um, I was drawing caricatures at SeaWorld. We could see the drawing without the signature, and we just know who it is instinctively. It's like a fingerprint kind of. You know what I mean? There's just certain ways that they you know move the pencil or, or, or pen or whatever they use that you just know it's them. You're like, cool, awesome. Uh, and so that's the kind of thing I want to talk about, you know, more of a micro level. Uh, so how do you find your style, right? And so I'm going to go over a couple of uh, just recommendations. Uh, these are just my suggestions. Don't take them to heart. Uh, and hopefully some of, you'll benefit from some of them. And uh, I have my sketchbook here. I'm not going to show this one yet. I'll do a whole video where I show the whole sketchbook. It's just not done yet, the whole sketchbook. I want to fill the whole thing before I actually show it. But I had it here as kind of a visual aid because to show you kind of what I meant. So... First, here's the first suggestion, right? This is kind of a duh, but try different mediums, right? Try different mediums. When I first used ballpoint pen, and this is just like a Mission Federal pen, I usually use like another ballpoint pen, right? But I can use this too. I uh, I pulled my strokes a little differently. I even kind of like smudged the, the ink a little bit. And, you know, you can kind of like be wispy with it. You can kind of create, as opposed to something like a marker or a fountain pen where I couldn't do that, or the fountain pen, I'd have, it'd be like, like this thing, this marker, it's like, boom, you know, there ain't no, it's not a lot of wispiness at all. That thing goes down hard. So that affected the way I pulled my strokes and that would affect the style of, of art I was doing. The, the style of, um, not the style of art, but kind of the, the finished product would look very different and I would use it differently because of the tool. So new tools can definitely break you out of that. That'd be a good way to find your own style. Uh, so I would look into that. Uh, if you don't use Crayolas or something, or I don't know, use crayon, anything, like just whatever you think is going to break you out of this like rhythm. Cause you start getting in a rut sometimes. And at least I feel like that. So yeah, try something new and it could become your favorite thing. You have no idea. This thing became my favorite freaking, uh, tool to use my, the, the ballpoint pen. And, uh, you know, it's almost time for me to like start to another one because I'm using it so much. That'd be one suggestion. Try something new that could spur some sort of creativity in you. Uh, the other thing would be, here's more of a mental thing, right? And it's, uh, it's going to be a little, it's a little weird. Uh, I would say, no, it's not actually not weird at all. So, uh, Jerry, I think it was Jerry Seinfeld, you know, the comedian, he said, uh, I'm going to butcher this, but I think he said the more, the more himself he was, the more unique he ended up being. Um, so kind of let your personality come out in your drawings. And I understand how frustrating that is, right? That's why I'm saying this is not so much a beginner thing. When you're a beginner, you 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 don't you're just trying to get the handle on the basics. You're thinking about how long this is, you know, how short that is, you know what I mean? Like what line quality. You're thinking about uh, stuff like that. You're not thinking about, hey, I should throw this in there. Hey, I should, you can't. It's you gotta have, be in a relaxed state for that. Cause, so that's why I feel like you gotta be more intermediate. 
for that one. But think about this, right? What do you what do you like, right? For me personally, I love uh, science fiction movies. I love horror movies, right? So does everybody, right? So what can I do that's a little bit more me? Maybe more, uh, a little more specific, right? I like uh, specifically about that stuff. I love the monsters in them. Okay. What kind of monsters do I like? I like the the kind of uh, predatorial animal ones, not so much the sluggish, gross-looking ones. So that's kind of, okay, a little bit more. Uh, you know, do I like the ones that transform, like the werewolf? And That's my thing, you know? Or do I like something that, like, the vampire, it's more ancient. The story's a little more classy, like the, the you know, he's got, like, this beautiful, like, beautiful form. <laughs> yeah, he's got, like, a, yeah, eventually, he was, like, a handsome guy. And then he turns into this, like, monster. But most versions of him just look like a human, kind of, all jacked up. You know, with fangs. Uh, I'm more into, like, like I said, the werewolf, where it's, like, just some dude. And he turns into this, like, crazy, crazy monster. Uh, you know, he looks like he's on roids or something. I'm more into that. Uh, I'm also a big fan of, like, history. You know, I listen to Hardcore History, which is a podcast. Maybe uh, when it comes to history, is there something I like? I love tanks, you know? It is not going, it's just going through my topics, right? And So maybe I'll grab a tank... And add that to a creature design. Like, add that aesthetic, for example. Um, so, like, tanks, especially in the World War II, some of them, there, there's a lot of, like, what I would do sometimes is I would look at certain things in their design, for example. I'm not going to draw a tank. I'm just looking at for, like, the straights and the curves. So I would look for something in their design and I would incorporate it into a creature design of my own. You know? Uh, let me give you an like for a good example would be this. I was thinking more of Asian kind of Aztec art. And I was thinking of the swirls that are, are kind of within certain uh, certain types of Aztec art, especially uh, some of their chest plates. Uh, and I was seeing these swirls, right? And I was like, alright, I really like these swirls. How can I put that into a design? That's my own, right? Especially the face there. I was thinking of Quetzalcoatl a little bit. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm incorporating what I like into my own art. That's already kind of a big genre, you know? And, and this this is not like super unique, you know? It's just you a little bit unique, you know? That's all you have to be. You don't have to be that unique. And I have something that I like, you know what I mean? And uh, it's kind of like that, you know? I'm throwing myself into what I'm doing. Uh, and that will create a signature kind of a uh, theme, kind of a thematic thing. That's on a thematic level. Okay, that's the second one. So that's on a thematic level. Uh, look at what you like and just start, you know, incorporating it to what, for example, this is a little mundane. This is not finished, by the way. That's why I'm not going to show most of this. This is not finished. It's just a tank I started. But I'm, the, the one thing I'm thinking about this tank is this is a plain old tank. What can I do? to make this a little bit different. There'll probably be some sort of design here. There'll be some sort of element. Maybe something's inside, uh, you know, coming out of that port. I doubt it. No, it's closed. <laughs> and it's pen. That's that's like a... So what can I do with this that will make it a little bit different? And that would be a little part of me, you know? That'll come out of my personality, you know? Just have fun. So that's thematic. That'd be thematic. That's the second one. That's the second kind of advice would be like... So the first one... Let's go over them again. Number one would be use a, new, use a new tool that will help you out without even really you trying. Second would be like throw as much of your personality as you can, you know, as you can where you're at right now. Throw it in there. Just have fun with it. Uh, you know, whatever you like. You might be into like, I know my buddy's like super into like model airplanes and he throws bizarre airplanes <laughs> into his, uh, into his like uh, kind of organic animal um really large ant like uh, he does like kaiju stuff I'll, I'll link him one day but he throws that kind of stuff in there my other buddy does more animation you know he he throws a lot of what he like you know uh, he throws storylines that involve like you know uh, you know his family he throws it in there and you don't even realize it but you know if you know him you know it's his family uh okay third advice third advice would be kind of on the theme of this uh third let me move that paper right here so the third advice would be Play with your uh, kind of quality of line. Uh, quality of line is a big thing. For example, if I'm drawing like... Hmm, so if I draw a circle 
Okay, so if I just draw like whatever, circle, flat line. But let's say I want something with a really thick tapered line. Not even tapered, just a really big thick line around everything. Where everything in the inside's thin, that's already going to change the look of it. If you're looking at, obviously these are simplistic, but if you have a more dynamic, if you have a really complex photo picture and you start messing around with the outside contour lines, like I do a lot, it'll give it a completely different look, you know, especially when you have it everywhere. Well, the inside lines are the same. So playing with your line quality, you could also have like, for example, and I've talked about this before, you know, uh, Thick to thin, you know what I mean? Let's say this is thin. Thick to thin is lame right now. But thick to thin. You could have the exact same drawing structurally and just change the thickness and quality of the line, and it'll make it look completely different. You know, or maybe no line, right? You know, with paintings, certain paintings have like no line at all. You just shade along the edge. So that'd be the other one. Toy with your line quality. That's a big thing. Um, and then another thing would be like, for example, kind of a structural exaggeration. Um, and I'm thinking more like tra from traditional art, let's say traditional art is something like, let me move this over. Let's say traditional art is something like, and I'm gonna just do it really quick, who cares? So let's just say this is, sorry about that, my camera cut out. So if you have a, let's just say that's a normal portrait. Normal structure. Pretend that doesn't suck. Ha! And then, uh, and then you have something like you know Joe Mad would probably draw something like, you know, who <laughs> draws this like really perfect people kind of thing. More angular. So I was thinking like exaggeration of, uh, exaggeration of style as well. I'm sorry, exaggeration of kind of like structure. Your structure will completely affect how you draw things. And I, I tend to see things between this kind of balance of between uh, round and angular. I think uh, there's a book on that by, oh, I can't remember the book. I'll try to write it in the description. But there's a really good book on that topic, you know, kind of the battle between uh, kind of like round forms, you know, and like certain comic strips. Roundness tends to be uh, a little bit friendlier, you know, nicer, that kind of thing. Angular tends to be a little more, you know, edgy, you know, kind of cool, that kind of thing. But, you know, round things can be cool, right? Like like Baymax is cool, right? But he's also made to look friendly, you know. Uh, there's certain armor that looks very round, and that looks awesome. That can be hard edge. So you're kind of balancing out this this uh, hard versus angled kind of look. Anyways, that's about it. Those are the four, they're just four tips, man. Uh, so that's pretty much it, guys. I appreciate you watching this video. Uh, also, I'm gonna be selling a program very soon. Uh, about, it's gonna be called the 22 Steps to Becoming a Better Artist, and that's all about kind of the mental aspects of drawing. Uh, I believe this is like, I went over a little, tiny bit of it. I touched on it a little bit on this video, but it's going to be like 22 audios, and it's going to be one of those things where you listen to one a day, and they're short, too. They're like five to ten minutes, nothing crazy, you know, each one. But every one of them goes over, I think, a really essential thing that that, that artists kind of need, you know, that I've noticed. Uh, and I think it would help everybody at different stages of whatever, you know, at different stages of your journey, right? Because we're all on this kind of art journey together. Um, so that was corny. <laughs> But yeah, if you do want to like uh, check that out, it's not out yet, but you can sign up from the email list. Uh, I'll put it on the screen somewhere. You can uh, check it out. All you got to do is give me your email, uh, put in your email, and I will send you an email when it's out. Uh, I barely email anybody, <laughs> so don't worry. I'm not going to spam it. Uh, I'm not going to spam it at all. That's crazy. Uh, but pretty much it. I'll just let you know when it comes out. Um, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, I'll talk to you guys next time.